Welcome to worship at St. Rollock's Church of Scotland in Sight Hill today. It's a joy to know that you are joining with us and seeking the Lord with us as we gather in Jesus' name to worship. A particular welcome today is extended to our partner church, which is Torrance Parish Church of Scotland. And if you're joining us from Torrance this morning, then it's a true delight to know that you're with us. We've enjoyed a partnership with you over many, many years, and it's great now to be able to share in some services together as we are doing them online. So wherever you are and whatever your reason for tuning in to this time of worship, it is my prayer that you will have a real sense of the Lord's presence with you wherever you are and know him ministering to you and keeping his promises to you, even in this worship time. Let's hear just a few words from Psalm 85 this morning as we come to this time of worship. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. This service is taking place in September and it's a month when we often think of the harvest and thank God for the good gifts that he gives to us. And this morning as we continue thinking about the Lord's Prayer, we'll be thinking about the petition that Jesus gave us to pray when we were to ask for our daily bread. And so we're thinking about the way that God provides for his world and the way that he does that perfectly. So let's pray and then we'll sing a hymn together that speaks of God ordering the times and seasons and giving the harvest in its time. But first, let's pray and speak together with God. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you this day and know that your love and your faithfulness wait for us. We thank you that you promise your presence to us as a Heavenly Father who cares for his children. Lord, you know what our week and the past few days have been like. You know the stresses and strains that we've been under, the anxieties that have crept into our minds. You've been with us when we've celebrated the great events of life, and you have been there in the still and quiet moments too, for you have promised never to leave or forsake your people. We thank you that as we come and worship you and share in this time together today, we are coming to the God who gives good things to his children, the God who has ordered times and seasons, the God who waters the earth with rain, who warms it with the heat of the sun, and who promises that there will be a harvest. We thank you that we can come to give you our thanks, but also to bring to you our concerns, and we'll do that later as we pray for others. But for now, we want to focus on you. We ask, Lord, that you would lift our eyes to see your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in all his splendor and in all his glory, the one who left the riches of heaven to come down to earth to live the life of man, and how we thank you that in his solidarity with us, he understands completely what it is to live the human life. He understands it in every way except for the one that is sin, such a part of our lives, and yet never a part of his. We thank you, Father, that even in our sinfulness we can come to Jesus knowing that it was through his death on the cross that our sin was paid for and that we are able to be forgiven. Help us this morning, today, whenever we are tuning in to this service, to know 
that our sins are forgiven in Christ. Help us to have that sense of being set free in him, that overwhelming thankfulness and joy and setting free from guilt that allows us, by the help of your Spirit, to open our hearts and minds and to praise you and to worship you, to give you the glory for all that you have done. Father, may that be reflected in our heart's attitude to you now as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. So our hymn is for the gifts of heaven in the fields of earth. My soul will sing to the Lord. So let's worship together. The words will come along the screen and you can join in wherever you are. morning we're going to read two uh, short readings. The first comes from the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament and we're reading in chapter 30 at verse 7. It's a book of sayings uh, just like the name implies. Proverbs, things that are easy to remember. And then once we've read in Proverbs we're going to turn into the gospel of Matthew and read in chapter 6 from verse 25. So if you have your Bible there, you might like to look up both of these passages this morning, Proverbs 30 and Matthew chapter 6. Together, let's listen to God's word. Two things I ask of you, O Lord, don't refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. And in the Gospel of Matthew, the words of Jesus himself. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, 
or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And may God bless his word to us as we think about it this morning in the context of the petition Give us today our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. Looking at the Lord's Prayer, we've discovered that there is real treasure in it. Treasure that we often miss as we simply recite the words without really thinking about what they mean. At the beginning of the prayer, we've seen how Jesus teaches us to focus our attention on God when we pray. And that's a fundamental of all prayer. He encourages us to enjoy the relationship that God calls us into as his children, as we say, our Father. We've been challenged to realize the greatness of what we pray when we ask God to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So you could say that the Lord's Prayer begins with theological treatise. It's about the fatherhood of God, the holiness of God, the sovereignty of God, the kingdom of God. And these are all big and weighty theological topics which we're invited to appreciate as we step into prayer. So how surprising is it when we come to the next petition in the Lord's Prayer? Give us today our daily bread. You kind of do a double take. You think, how did we go from these great and lofty theological truths about God to the mundane and ordinary need for daily bread? Didn't it seem a bit out of place when the disciples heard it first? Do we even notice the gear shift when we pray the Lord's Prayer? But it's a masterstroke on the part of Jesus Because I guess that after the first part of this prayer, the disciples might well have been left wondering if they could talk to God about the ordinary, everyday things of life, or if prayer was only about the heavenly matters. Imagine if prayer, a conversation with God, always had to happen on a theological and abstract level. Where would that leave us? How well Jesus understands us, how well he knows what we're like, and how kind he is towards us. He knows that when we come to prayer, most often our minds are preoccupied with very concrete matters, the needs of others, our own needs, our desires. And so what he does is that he teaches us that prayer gives this space to talk with God about our families about our relationships, our work situations, our disappointments, our failures, our celebrations, our our longings for the nations and for the peoples of the world, but also for the things that cause us worry and anxiety in the day-to-day run of life. And the wonderful thing is that he gives us permission 
to bring these mundane, ordinary concerns to God in prayer. And when you pause to think about this, it really is a beautiful thing. If we had been forbidden to talk about the small things of life with God our Father, the things that so often keep us awake in the night or make us crotchety with those around us, would we not have felt terribly alone and isolated from our God? Would it not have left us feeling as though the largest part of our life was fatherless? If these were things we could not speak of with God in prayer. And so Jesus opens up for us. It's a whole new world of communication with God the Father. God who's interested in the ordinary things of our lives. The God for whom the little things matter alongside the big things. And here we're encouraged in prayer to, to bring these things to God. To speak with him about anything and everything. It's wonderful. It's so precious. Jesus himself who comes down into the narrow, straightened compass of our everyday life through the incarnation. He comes right into the very heart of things. And he didn't ever fail to notice the little things. One paralytic man in the midst of a vast crowd. The tiredness of his disciples after a long day of ministry. A short man perched up a tree. The need when wine ran out at a wedding. And because of him, because of Jesus, the daily bread, the mundane and the routine ins and outs of our everyday life and experience, all can be shared with God in prayer. For he's our father who takes delight in his children. So if you've been thinking that the matters concerning you are too small to trouble the father with, then hear this encouragement today. Daily bread. Ask God. Share these concerns with him. Tell him about it. And know that he will listen and answer. Jesus teaches us in this prayer to pray for our daily needs. And it's quite specific in that we are to ask for enough for this day. For that's what the word daily really means here. You could say, give us our bread or give us enough bread until tomorrow. That would be one way of translating this petition. And again, this is where we see the challenge of this prayer. Praying in this way, it challenges our inbuilt need for security. It challenges our desire to have and possess things and even challenges our desire for productivity. Remember for a moment what things were like just six or seven months ago when lockdown began. Do you remember your own feelings when you went to the shops? So many people were buying far more than they needed. Perhaps you were one of them. Toilet rolls of all things were like gold dust, bags of pasta, bags of flour, couldn't be had for love nor money. And it was so easy for us to be swept up into that panic of filling our cupboards with more than we needed. And yet the spirit of the Lord's prayer is to ask God for enough until tomorrow. It's to trust in the provision of a loving God whose kingdom, for which we've just prayed, is a kingdom of abundance. And Proverbs is so right. When the writer there says, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? This petition of the Lord's prayer, it clearly calls to mind the experience of Israel in the wilderness 
when God provided them with daily bread, with manna and the instruction only to gather what they needed for that day, apart from on the Sabbath, when two days' worth was to be gathered in. The ones that doubted the ability of God to provide and gathered more than they needed for one day found that the excess was moldy and inedible the next day. The ones who thought they'd be lazy or cute and save themselves from going out and gathering every day quickly learned that the whole point of the way in which they were to gather this bread, this manna in, was a daily exercise of faith and trust in God. It was a daily display of solidarity with the rest of the community. And they learned that the God of abundance gives enough for all. And as one of the saints of old, St. Ambrose, pointed out, none may appropriate to himself that which is given for the use of all. Daily bread is about sharing. It's about building a future on faith, not on the false security of possessing always more and more. Jesus asks us to pray for the minimum that is needed to maintain existence. He doesn't teach us to pray for a large income or a luxurious life. There is no permission here for what has become known as a prosperity gospel. The only prosperity that Jesus guides us to ask for is that which sustains us through this present day. Now reflect just for a moment on your own approach to prayer. Reflect on what you pray for yourself, your family, your friends. Think on how that is that this teaching in the Lord's Prayer, how it should shape your politics, your working life, your family life, how it should shape your bank balance, your long-term financial planning. These are very real questions for us to grapple with as Christians if we say that we trust and believe in God. Day by day, we pray these words, give us today our daily bread. How courageous are we to allow these words to do their work in our lives? Most of us, of course, have more than our daily bread. And who amongst us goes out and buys only a couple of slices of bread instead of a loaf to last us several days? We live in a highly materialistic world. We struggle to know what gifts to buy for folk on special occasions because most of them already have everything they need. How then do we remind ourselves that what we have comes from God? And how do we teach this to our children, many of whom are so asked, so used to asking and receiving that they have little concept of the grace of God providing for the needs of their family? Give us this day, today, our daily bread. You know, the order of this Lord's Prayer is so important. We need that first part that focuses our gaze upon God so that we're reminded of him, his character, his nature. This is what gives us the confidence to trust him and to ask him for what we need. If you like, that's the spiritual daily bread that nourishes our relationship with him and builds up the confidence to trust him for all that we pray for. But praise God that he is a loving father who delights to give good things to his children. A fair father who has made provision for all. And let's together resist that temptation to ask for more than we know we need. So that we do not covet that which is kindly and generously given for the use of of all. Give us our daily bread is about sharing. 
How do you and I share what the Lord has given to us? As we pray these words, give us today our daily bread. May we remember that we are asking in faith and in trust for enough until tomorrow. Amen. take time this morning to pray together and at several points in the prayer you'll see the phrase Lord have mercy come on your screen and I simply want to invite you to speak that phrase out loud as we pray together let's pray Father God we thank you for your word which is precious to us which challenges us which provokes us, makes us uncomfortable, and yet comforts us at the same time. And we thank you for what you're teaching us through the words of this prayer that is known to so many of us for such a very long time. Help us to see it in a fresh way. And each time we pray these words, to be conscious of the depth of meaning that lies behind them. So today let us pray for those who hunger in this land, whose only kitchen is a soup kitchen, whose only food is from a food bank or what others do not want, whose diet depends on luck and not on planning. Lord, feed your people using our skills and conscience and eradicate from our politics and private lives the apathy to hunger which comes from our own greed. So we pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the hungry in other lands where economies burdened by debt cannot respond to human need or where fields are farmed for our benefit by low-waged workers courted by starvation. Lord, feed your people 
even if rulers must cancel debt and shareholders lose profit or diners restrict their choice in order that all may be nourished. Let us pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the hungry for justice who document inequalities, demonstrate against tyranny, distinguish between need and greed, and are sometimes misrepresented or persecuted in the process. May their labor not be in vain, and may we be counted in their number. Let us pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hunger for you, Lord, who long for the freedom to meet together, who long to be taught in your word and your ways, who look for an end to persecution because of their trust in you, who long and yearn to confess you openly to their friends and families. May you feed them with the food of your word and with the bread of life himself. And may we know that hunger too. We pray for the hungry and the fed. Lord, have mercy. And so in the presence of the bread of life, who refused food for himself in order to nourish others, we deepen our devotion by praying his words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. So for those of you who have been joining us uh, live, so to speak, on Sunday the 20th of September uh, from 11 a.m. onwards, let me just remind you that at quarter to 12, we are going to uh, have a Zoom fellowship time with the folks in Torrance. And I would just remind you of that and urge you to uh, find your way into the Zoom uh, call for that at the end of this time of worship. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a privilege to know that others are worshipping with us when we come to this time each week. Do pray that you find something in this service that has spoken to you of the wonderful nature of God, whose love is for you and for the world. And as we close today, we're singing a song that reminds us of the security that we find when we trust in God. He becomes like an anchor that holds our lives fast in the midst of any storm and difficulty that comes our way. And I invite you to join with us as we worship God together and sing, We Have an Anchor that holds us firm.
secure by faith in the Savior's hands, shielded by His grace. On Christ we stand, He is Lord of all, we should never doubt. Through uncertain times, He is solid ground. We have an anchor that keeps us ahead of you in the coming days, may you know that you can always find your security and your safety and your refuge in Christ. Allow him to enfold you in his arms and you will be in the safest place in the whole of this world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen.